It's you in English, Anna Nichenka. Hello. And today our guest is John Herbst, Senior Director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center, U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine 2003-2006. Hello, Mr. Herbst, and welcome. Thank you that today you also joined our program. So my first question, U.S. President Joe Biden signed, as you know, a $40 billion aid package to Ukraine while he was in Seoul. And the legislation provides money for military and humanitarian aid. How can you describe this bill and this help from U.S. to Ukraine? It's very simple. <clears throat> the United States recognize that we have a great interest in making sure Ukraine defeats Russian efforts to take over the country. And therefore, we're willing to put the large amount of assistance um, into Ukraine for that outcome. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, as uh, the representative of the U.S. State Department, Andrea Collins, said, it shows that the American people support the Ukrainian people. And also U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken explained why Americans uh, give such a huge support to Ukrainians. He said... Uh, they see how a big country attacks a small country. Uh, they see how one country tries to change borders of another country. And uh, we cannot live in the world that exists in this way, he said. Um, what can you say about support from politicians, American politicians, and this society? Look, um, polls show that 75, 80% of the American people strongly support Ukraine, again, facing Kremlin aggression. <clears throat> and... Again, our leaders understand that Putin's objectives go beyond Ukraine. So the best way to defend our NATO allies is to help Ukraine defeat Russia. That's very important. Mm -hmm. And in one of the interviews, you said Putin wants to demonstrate at least something resembling a victory. And uh, the battle for Donbass will end in defeat for, food, uh, for Putin. However, this doesn't mean that he recognized this de defeat and he will say that he uh, this defeat, rather the opposite. What can make Putin now give up? I think if there is very, very strong... American and Western support for Ukraine. And that means especially that we send some of those weapon systems that Ukraine has been asking for and we've got yet to send. Uh, Putin's forces, A, will do poorly. Ukraine will be able to use that to take back territory that Russia has taken since February 24th. And he'll see that Ukraine's military is getting stronger. His own is going to be getting weaker as sanctions take, uh, have an impact and as our export controls have an impact. And it'll make it easier, excuse me, it'll mean he'll quickly, more quickly, maybe not quickly, but more quickly recognize he cannot win this war of aggression in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And also the other topic, Mark Milley said that the world could face a seri serious conflict between two powerful countries. China and uh, Russia have significant uh, military capabilities and both powers are fully committed to changing the current rules-based order. Uh, what's your opinion? Milley is exactly right. Uh, Putin is the more immediate danger because he's conducting this war in Ukraine. But China is stronger, and it's the longer-term danger. But China is watching very carefully as the United States and NATO respond to Putin's war in Ukraine. And he sees that we have united. He sees now that uh, Finland and Sweden want to join NATO. He sees that Russian forces are not doing very well on the, on the battlefield in Ukraine, in part because of Western weapons. And maybe he's starting to understand that aggression is not the smart move for China. Mm -hmm. And now we know that Joe Biden, U.S. President Joe Biden, arrived uh, in Tokyo to attend a summit with Japanese Prime Minister. Uh, will this Asia tour, Joe Biden's Asia tour, uh, influence and have results uh, for Ukrainian question? Well, I, th I think these are largely separate. Um, Biden's in Asia to demonstrate our great interest there, our support for our allies in Seoul and in Tokyo, and also as a kind of warning to China, do not do what, do not do with Taiwan what Putin's doing with Ukraine. Uh, but again, that's more about American Asian interests. But there are connections because Chinese, like the Russians, are watching America act closely. When they see American strength, they're less likely to commit aggression. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's really now hard to give some prognosis, but we have some results, uh, some uh, analysis from American Institute for the Study of War, and they say that Russian forces are conducting operations uh, to cut off Ukrainian ground lines of communication between Severodonetsk and uh, Lysychansk across the Seversky Donetsk River. Can we now suppose, I don't know, prognosis is really hard to, but what kind of new steps Russia uh, will make? Well, I think Russia's, I think that is one Russian aim. Another is to be able to move farther to the West, um, thinking they, they would like to make to take Mykolaiv, they would like to take Odessa. Um, but I think that Ukrainian forces, especially if they receive the equipment from the West that they're asking for, will be able to defeat these efforts by the Russians. Mm -hmm. Also, there was information from Poland, uh, it's, uh, from its government, and they said that Poland intends to host NATO bases on a permanent basis. This was official information. Now we know that uh, Polish President uh, uh, Andrzej Duda now arrived in Kiev. Uh, what do you think about uh, Polish uh, help uh, and attitude now to Ukraine and about, in general, European uh, support now? Well, I think um, Poland understands very well what's going on in Ukraine, and has been actively advocating for eight years for more Western support for Ukraine. Um, as for Europe, uh, certainly this massive invasion that Putin launched in February has persuaded many people, people in the past who are willing to excuse Putin's aggression in Ukraine, they've begun to understand that what Putin is up to is very dangerous. But there are still, uh, I would say, people in Europe who don't understand this and would like to see return to the old policy of accommodating or even appeasing um, Putin. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think they'll succeed. Mm -hmm. One more question um, about new U.S. ambassador uh, to Ukraine. Uh, she is a, a hot spot specialist and expert on the region. You were an ambassador, and uh, was it hard for you then in, in the years 2003, 2006? And how do you think, uh, will it be really hard now for Bridget Brink uh, to be um, an ambassador now while this Russian war? I think she's taking a very, very important position, precisely because of the war. Um, she's a superb diplomat, smart, energetic, strong, and I think you'll feel that as soon as she arrives. And uh, I'm sure she will do very well. Mm -hmm. And the last question for today, how do you think uh, NATO work now according, uh, according help uh, to Ukraine? How can you uh, describe it now? I'm sorry, American help for Ukraine? Western not help, help not, uh, not a step, according, yes. yeah, according to Ukraine, not oh, steps. I, I think NATO uh, has done well in providing support for Ukraine, um, specifically the weapons that NATO members are sending to Ukraine, uh, training that we've given in the past, that NATO has given in the past. And I think there will be increased cooperation between NATO and Ukraine because of this massive Russian new invasion. Thank you, Mr. Herbst, again for, for that you joined today our program. Thanks a lot. And I remind our viewers, it was John Herbst, Senior Director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center and U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine in 2003-2006. It was UA in English, Anna Nichenka. See you.